Okay, but I, I'm here to talk more about bubbles, bubbles, but uh, really I'm here to talk more about objects and arrays. We have a constructor function that makes objects. We have a empty array. Every time I click the mouse, I get a new object that goes into that array. Now, what if I want to delete objects from the array? Now, in a previous video, I referenced the splice function, which is a function that's built into JavaScript as part of the array object that allows you to splice something or delete something out of an array. The issue here is how do you choose when to delete something and which thing to delete? So I need to create an artificial scenario. You know, some scenarios might be the thing leaves the screen so you can remove it. The, another scenario might be it's like you have some game and things collide and when they collide, they one of them deletes. <laughs> um, but here what I'm going to do is have the uh, objects fade out. So the first thing I want to add to this program, right? I should restart it which is just I want to add the fact that I'm going to click and make these objects and as soon as they're born into the world they start fading away and disappear. So there's a difference between not seeing them and having them not actually exist in the array and that's kind of what I want to look at in this video here. So uh, audio is still working, I'm recording, this is good. Okay, so uh, I'm coming over here and uh, you know, in the last video I changed the object's color. Now all I want to do and move the mouse here is change its alpha. So you can see that's built in to be 100, but what I want to do now is add a variable. This dot, and I'm, you know what I'm going to call it? A lifespan or timer, let's call it lifespan. Kind of like, you know, this is sort of the classic particle system thing. You make all these particles, they exist for a period of time, they fade away, their life very fulfilling and meaningful, they're like 20 seconds of being pixels on the screen, they let a full life. Uh, uh, we don't have to feel okay. Anyway, and then and then you get rid of them from the array. You do that with with without any emotion or whatever. Anyway, okay. So the lifespan. Let's start it at 255. And if I put this dot lifespan here, I might add something to this move function. And you know maybe it makes more sense to call this function an update function. So I'm updating the life cycle of this particle. So I'm gonna call it update, meaning I update its location and I also update its lifespan. And all I'm going to do to its lifespan is say minus minus. Minus minus, by the way, means equals itself minus one. So, you know, I'll be a little bit more explicit about that and write that in so you can see it. So I'm just going to subtract one from the lifespan. X and Y change randomly, one from the lifespan. So if I now run this program and I click, oh, undefined is not a function line 15. Oh, right, of course. So here's the thing. Oh boy, it would be nice if this error message were a little bit better. Line 15, that seems right. So this error that it's giving me is actually the error in sketch.js. This is another, uh, not necessarily bug report, but something that I might file on GitHub for the editor to think about how do you deal with which tab the error is in, something to think about. So if I go over here to line 15, remember I changed the name of the function to update, but still in the code here it's called move. So I'm going to change this to update. I'm going to come back over here. And now you can see as I click, these objects are fading away. Now on purpose, I've left the stroke not fading. I'll add that in later because what I'm doing now is I'm visually showing you like is the object finished? It is when it's faded to black, but it's still in the array, right? If I said no stroke, it would look more like what you might expect, it's fading away and when it fades away it's gone, but it's still in the array. And you know, which is fine, it works, but if you're making, if, you're, if this is your installation and you're going to set it up somewhere or it's your web page or whatever and it's going to run for like a long time and you make zillions of objects, you want to remove them from the array. It's going to make your code run very, very slow to like operate all these additional objects that don't actually need to be on the screen anymore. So this is what we need to do. I'm going to put the stroke back in so we can see that and then later I'll remove it. So how do I actually remove the objects from the array when they fade it out? Okay, so let's think about this for a second over here. So here is an array. I'm going to draw it like this. And you can think of the array as having a bunch of particles in it, A, B, C, D, E. So what happens when you call splice? So this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if the array is called ARR, if I say ARR.splice, 
the arguments I need to give, right? Splice is a function that's part of the array object, just like you can push into an array, you can splice something out of the array. If I say index two, that means I want to delete this element, and then the number here is how many elements do you want to delete? So in this case, I only want to delete that one element, so the number is one, and most examples, most scenarios, that's probably what you'll want to do. But for some reason, I wanted to delete two and three, or two and three and four, I could put two or three, how many elements pass number two. So here, I just want to delete one element. This will remove this element from the array, and now, the array looks like this, A, B, D, E, 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can see when you delete something from the array, these elements stay in the same spot. These two elements shuffle over. I'm focusing on this because this actually makes a difference in how you loop through the array and check whether or not to delete it. So, um, so coming over here, uh, I'm going to press this button, let's look at where I want to delete this stuff from the array. So this is, the, uh, this is the bit of code right here where you're looping through every single object in the array. Start i equal to zero, go to the end of the array, update and display them. So what I need to do is figure out if I want to delete something there. So let me zoom in on the code here for a second and say if something bubbles.splice index uh, sorry, index i, one element, right? So as you're looping through the array, for every element i, element 0, element 1, element 2, element 3, check to see if it should be deleted, if it should delete that element. So how do you check if it should be de deleted? Here's an idea. How about if that value that's storing its alpha is less than 0, right? So this value lifespan, which starts at 255, is counting down. When it gets to below zero, this alpha zero, I can't see it on the screen, that's probably when you want to delete it. So how do you access a property of an object from outside the object with the dot syntax? Just like you're saying bubbles.update or bubbles index, sorry, bubbles index i dot update or bubbles index i dot display, I can say if bubbles index i dot lifespan is less than what? Zero. It's counting down. It's kind of like when something gets to the edge of the screen, change its speed. Here I'm saying when something's alpha gets down to zero, delete it from the array. When this bubble i lifespan is less than zero, delete that bubble i. Splice that bubble i from the array. So let's watch this now. I'm going to click, and you can see as I'm clicking on them, when they get down to zero, they actually leave. So even though, so they're no longer in the array, they're gone. The size of the array is now zero. I can keep adding objects and they will all fade away and disappear. Now I could remove that stroke and you won't notice them disappear like that because I'm only removing it once the alpha is all the way to zero. But I have actually caused a little bit of a problem. It happened to work. This is fine and this will work in most cases, but I did do something that's kind of a mistake and I want to like talk about that for a second because and you want to change the way I'm doing this loop. So what's the danger here? Look at this loop here. What am I doing here? I am doing something to every element of an array from zero to the end of the array, from zero to the length of the array. And while I'm doing that loop, I'm like modifying the array. Like you can imagine like if while you're looping you're adding things to the array, you'll never exit the loop because you're trying to get to the end, but new things are going to the array. So anytime you start manipulating the array itself in the loop, you could walk into some danger. This happened to work, but there is, people are applauding outside of the hallway, but they're definitely not applauding me. Um, you probably couldn't hear that, but, um, but anytime you do that, you, walk, you run into a little bit of danger. So let's return to this diagram, and now let's pretend that we're looping. I'm looping. So first, i starts at zero. And I ask, should I delete element A? No, I should not delete element A. Okay, now I becomes one. Should I delete element one? No, I should not delete element one. So now I becomes two. Should I delete element two, C? Uh, yes, I should delete element two, index two, C. So delete it, and now the array looks like this. What does I become next? I becomes three. Should I delete element E? No, I should not. I'm done. Do you notice what happened? What did I miss? I never checked element D. 
Because when I was two, I checked element C, which got removed, then I became three, but when you remove something, everything shifts over, so D is now in two. I skipped D and went right on to E. So in the end, it didn't really matter because a second later, draw is gonna execute again. I'm gonna loop through the array again and I'll catch that element. But this could, in other scenarios, really cause you a big problem. The solution to this is actually to go, and it's a nice exercise to like do this anyway. The solution to this is to go through the array backwards. So if you start here and go backwards, if you delete this element, it doesn't matter that all the elements shift over because you're going in that direction. So how to loop through an array backwards? Um, over here, all I need to do, instead of starting at zero, what do I want to start at? The end of the array or bubbles.length minus one. Where do I want to end my loop? I want to end my loop not at the end of the array, but at the beginning, which is zero. So x i greater than or equal to zero. And I don't want to go forward through the loop, right? I want to say instead of i plus plus, i minus minus. So now if I run this, you know, visually it's the same exact result that you're seeing here, but um, but at least now that error has been fixed. You can't really tell the difference in this program, but I, but it could really matter. Plus, this is good. This is good for you to think this way because how the loop is working, what the array is doing, these are things that you always need to think about. Now, I really should just be done with this video, and you could you could stop now. You can turn it off. <laughs> I'm going to do one more thing though, which is that I, there's something about this that I don't love. Hey, it's fine, but you know. Here, what's going on here? Notice how I'm calling update and I'm calling the display function, but here I'm accessing lifespan directly and then checking if it's less than zero. There might be a more complex scenario that determines if an object should be removed or not. So rather than start polluting this area with lots more code, I have to do a calculation, a distance calculation, is it far from this, et cetera. If this worked for just this, what might work better is if I had a function in the object, a function called like is finished or finished or time to remove, right? A function that tells me whether or not to delete that object. What I'm saying is what I want to do is write a, a call a function. Let's just call it is finished. All right. So I'm executing a function. You can see this reads nicely. If bubbles index i, let me move this out of the way. If bubbles index i is finished, remove it from the array. So now I'm farming out the job of determining is the alpha below zero or is it off screen? I could have multiple possibilities to a function. So I have to write that function where? I have to write that function in the object. Here, I need to add a function. I can add it anywhere. This dot is finished, whoops, equals function. Now this comes back to a topic from an earlier uh, video about a function that returns a value. What is this function doing? I should really just move, I'm still standing in front of this. What is this function doing? This function is answering the question, is it finished or is it not finished? The job of this function is to return true or false, right? This right here is a Boolean expression. Bubbles index i dot is finished should evaluate to true or false. So if I were to say, if I were to just right here return false, and I run this code, the bubbles will never, ever, ever be finished. Because is finished always, always, always says, no, I'm not finished, return false, return false, return false. I need to build the logic of checking the lifespan right here, right? If, li if this dot lifespan is less than zero, return true, otherwise, return false. So this is a really classic scenario where you need a function that returns a value. Again, in this particular scenario, it's a very simple situation. I'm only checking lifespan less than zero. But you can imagine a much more complex logic to determine whether you should return true or false. If it's less than zero, return true. Otherwise, return false. Meaning, out here, where I call this function is finished, if it's less than zero, uh, you'll get true, this will evaluate to true, and it will get deleted. Otherwise, it will evaluate to false, and it won't get deleted. Same as we had before, but that Boolean expression is now essentially in the object, and I get a true or false back from the object. So let's just, let, let's do a couple things. Let's first confirm that this works. I'm gonna add a lot of objects, and see that they're disappearing when they're faded out. They are, and then I wanna just 
finish this up, put a nice little bow on this example, and um, just take out that stroke. So I'm going to say no stroke. So now, all, now what I'm seeing is I can add as many objects. They exist on the screen. They fade out. When they fade it out, they're also deleted from the array itself which again, to the end user doesn't matter, but you've made a more efficient program, one that over time won't just fill up this giant, giant array and iterate all these objects that are no longer being used. So, you know, there's a bunch of things you could try here. You could try to do something where objects to get deleted when they leave the screen, that would be kind of like a nice thing to try, or some other set of conditions. You know, how do you have something get deleted when you click on it? That would really, like, you know, work well with the previous video I just made. That would be a great exercise. So think about, taking this idea, have your own objects, when do you delete them, when do you not delete them, do you need to loop through the array backwards, those types of things, and see if you could get that going. Okay, that's the end of this video. It was uh, 15 minutes exactly what I said it would be, and I'm gonna turn it off now. Uh.